Well, a very good morning to all of you orange gobblers and yogurt pot botherers. Welcome to today's reading by Simon Reynolds, the first by this wonderful gent, uh, an English journalist born in the 60s. That's better. Who I felt was the Lester Bangs of my generation, perhaps the kind of gonzo style journalist, one who uh, was a sort of involved participant as well as a critic, distant and, and, and analysing his culture from a certain distance as well. He is the author of uh, Energy Flash, a journey through rave music and dance culture. Anyone who's interested in any form of electronic dance music rave, hardcore, techno, electro, jungle. This is your holy textbook and I cannot recommend it enough. It only enhances um, the experience, I would say, of techno paganism, which I really believe it is a thing and exists. Uh, so can strongly recommend that. He uh, is also uh, author of a very uh, well-regarded book on post-punk, uh, which I have left back in England, but it's very, very good. Po it's called Rip It Up and Start Again, to use the orange juice lyric. This is some of the uh, interviews regarding that book. Um, totally wide post-punk interviews and overviews. Is that right? Um, lots of nice interviews there. Uh, and then he has got a more recent book, I think this came out this year or last year, 2019, a book on glam rock, which is not a genre that interests me very much, but anything he writes about, he makes interesting. That was the hope I had before I started reading it, and it's well and truly fulfilled. He actually has a lot on Gary Glitter, and it's surprisingly interesting, the, the rise and fall of that gentleman. So, welcome aboard the fast-moving ghost caboose. We are going now to enter the territory of a different book he wrote called Bring the Noise, 20 Years of Writing About Hip Rock and Hip Hop. Um, so it's a collection of reviews that he has done. And today we are going to look at one word, uh, Raga. Raga, what is Raga? Where does it come from? Uh, raga is a genre from Jamaica and it comes from the word ragamuffin. Uh, and according to Wikipedia, a muffin is a, or a muff or a muffin is a poor thing or a creature. And a, a ragamuffin would be a poor creature in rags, a sorry state. So a member of Jamaica's one of Jamaica's ghettos, the the um, lump from proletariat, proletariat, you could call it the underclasses. Reynolds has a strong allegiance to hardcore music. He says the best of all experimentation, the vanguard is in hardcore. What is hardcore? Well, it's music connected to the lower classes um, and to this raw expression. Um, I'm sure we'll go into this in much more detail at another time. So he favours UK rave instead of um, cerebral Detroit versions of techno. Uh, he's quite anti-Jeff Mills in certain ways and really pro, I don't know, um, I can't think of a good example, Underworld, for example, from the UK hardcore scene. Um, but today we're dealing with more of a hardcore coming from uh, the Jamaican from ghettos of Kingston, um, connected to a sort of a, 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 a sister or a brother of dancehall culture. So dancehall would be the, uh, again, my history on this is not very good. I'm not, not so familiar with uh, Jamaican music. Um, but the point of doing these, these um, broadcasts is to sort of educate myself as well to make sure I get fed. Um, so anyone who has more expertise on this or knows much more about this, please just feel free to post some links and just say, you're wrong. Um, 
But as I understand it, uh, dancehall uh, becomes a sort of more digi digital form of reggae, um, heavily reliant on um, tracks that were used before. So the idea of innovation is really quite different in Jamaican music. It's okay to heavily borrow bass lines and so on and reversion things instead of heavily innovating, if that makes sense. Let's put these books away. Um, so if you would listen to sort of compilations, you'll hear the same sort of melody come back, same bass line. And one of the songs um, I've put in the description is Wayne Smith's Under Me Slang Tang, which I used to find really annoying. I used to hear it all the time when I lived in Leeds in North England. You'd hear it on these big sound systems. And um, the singing used to kind of annoy me, but now I can't get it out of my head. The bass line is highly addictive, and I strongly suggest you have a listen to Under Me Slang Tang um, by Wayne Smith. And that was reversioned over and over again. It's an absolutely legendary track. Really reminds me of home to hear this now. Um, so um, I think just to outline a little bit more of where that word ragga comes from again, and this is Wikipedia. By the way, I'm very proud to use Wikipedia. I'm a big fan of this open source um, opportunity uh, to collect information. Uh, I, I'm really sick of hearing people saying you shouldn't trust or use Wikipedia. I think it's complete nonsense. Of course, you should be careful. But it's a great resource. Like YouTube, we can educate ourselves. We don't need to be in academic institutions. So, meaning a, a ragamuffin, an urchin, a street urchin, a shabbily clothed, clothed child. It's actually ragamuffin is mentioned in some quite surprising uh, instances in literature. Henry the Fourth, Part One by Shakespeare. I have led my ragamuffins where they are peppered. Yeah, nice. There's not three of, of my hundred and fifty left alive, and they are for the town's end, and to beg during life. I've led my ragamuffins where they are peppered. Then from Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Uh, my eyesight's going here, I can't quite read the screen. But, but I may inquire for how you intend to support the establishment. If all the pupils are little ragamuffins, I'm afraid your crop won't be profitable in a worldly sense. That's kind of delights me that this is used in so many kinds of literature way 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 before um the i guess what we consider the the well the, the emergence of dub and reggae and techno uh, and uh dancehall and ragga uh this is used in the late 1500s um so um let's get going with uh the beginning of the article it's only a few pages long and uh I can't play it, so I'm just responding to Mestre Andre. I can't really. I think I might, I might be upsetting some lawyer somewhere, and I do not own even this material, which I very much stated. Uh, but it's in the description of this video, so please, 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 do play it alongside the video. Maybe um, I could sing it for you in my excellent Jamaican patois. Probably not a good idea. So why don't we crack on? Thank you, Mestre Andre, and I hope you're well, and I hope you're wiping the yogurt from your hungry, hungry lips as we delve into the world of Simon Reynolds and Raga. For the intrigued outsider, Raga produces the same split response as gangster rap. You can dig mightily the booty coercing futurism of the production but wince and flinch when it comes to the ideology. Like gangster, ragga lyrics are all guns, bitches and blunts. Just as fogies lament gangster and swing, and swing beat as a degeneration from the olden golden days of soul and funk, similarly nostalgics see today's digital reggae as spiritually bankrupt compared to 70s roots and dub. There may be a generational divide here, the idea of corruption uh, per permeating the new sort of form the, uh, or the new generation of digital dub or digital reggae. Certainly Rastafarian militancy and mysticism has given way to a secular solipsistic worldview oscillating between sexism 
and sadism, but sonically, Jamaican pop remains as creative and compelling as ever. Interesting to outline the spirituality behind uh, uh, this, or the spirituality that has been rejected, Rastafarianism, uh, as collective consciousness, um, is being rejected for an individual um, um, approach to music. This is really, really wonderfully outlined in um, uh, Energy Flash, uh, this compendium of electronic dance music culture, uh, where Reynolds um, has the most wonderful chapter on jungle, and he, he analyzes the changes of behavior, uh, styles, rhythms, by just looking at how people dance. Whereas rave music, uh, and ambient and so on is open, the chest is out, you're looking upwards to the skies. Uh, jungle in, I guess, 1994, 1995, London was much more inward, introverted, looking towards the belly. We call it navel gazing, almost like a kind of shoe gaze of electronic dance music. And there's also m very much a, a drug component here as well, instead of uh, uh, a blissful, ecstatic, psychedelics, the amphetamine psychedelic compound of ecstasy, MDMA. Instead with jungle, you have much more neurotic, introverted, skunk, uh, heavy, heady cannabis strains with psychedelic compounds that bring you into yourself like an armadillo. No doubt there are other drugs involved. Uh, judging dancehall ragga by Shaggy or Chaka Demas is like thinking too unlimited or all you need to know about techno. The fierce, far out stuff is the hardcore. That's where you'll find the strangest, staccatoist beats, the starkest productions. Ragga, ragga, ragga 2. Now this is a compilation I've put in the descriptions. Put it on. It's brilliant. It's by the Jamaican label Green Sleeves. Raga 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 2, listen now, it's fantastic, is a good entry point for the uninitiated. Uninitia uninitiated. Raga is reggae with its fluency turned to erectile rigor. One track here is called Sperm Rod. The key factor in this shift to stiff are one, digital technology, two, Jamaica becoming a stopover for the cocaine trade in the early 80s. Now, Raga, it, I've, it seems to me, is much more late 80s, early 90s. Might be wrong there. But this is quite a curious addition to uh, the definition of Raga. Raga, just doing a very cursory online search, is usually just told, uh, described as having d a, a digital harder reggae with a dryness and a kind of a unbridled rhythmic component a free and loose and experimental rhythmic component reynolds does something different and he tries to evaluate or look at the chemistry behind all this in this case the trafficking of cocaine how might that affect the music Rag, Ragger's sound, crisp and dry, all itchy and scratchy computer game blips and fidgety ticks of percussion, sounds like nothing so much as electro, while its palsied rhythms, like palsy, shaking, trembling, suggest coke jitters rather than a marijuana moonwalk. Fierce competition to be fresher than the rest results in weird and wonderful production gimmicks. <laughs> this is great, this next description. Like the gastric rumble bass sounds on Papa Sans Sirene. That is amazing. Gastric rumble bass sounds. Or the mud squelch noises on Red Dragon's burning up which fit the lewd lyrics. Like gangster vis-a-vis -vis 70s funk, sampling allows Raga to simultaneously play, excuse me, simultaneously pay homage and 
and wreck iconoclastic damage to 70s reggae on Sabatooth's Wap Dem Girl, a tiny wisp of ethereal rootsicle keyboard floats amid the clanking machine beats, while Lieutenant Stitchy's wood fire is cyber dub. In fact, Raga is at once futuristic and at atavistic. Many of its rhythms come from African based cult religions like Etu, Pokomania, and Kumina. Fascinating. That is another thing mentioned in the online description, descriptions of Raga, that there's a heavy African tribal component. Another excellent introduction to Dancehall is Raga Sampler Volume 1, which is on the Charm label. I can't find this on YouTube. No doubt it is on Soulseek. Okay. So that's called the Raga Sampler Volume 1. The standout track is Buju Banton's Mind Behind the Wind, which slots the usual gruff, chest-puffed-out bragging amidst undulating tabla-like beats, oddly reminiscent of avant-funk visionary Arthur Ruthsell's Let's Go Swimming. Another highlight is Galaxy P's hardcore porno ragger, so hyped that its rhythmic its rhythm mechanism almost seizes up. There's another compilation here he mentions just ragger volume six, also on charm, showcases several examples of a new trend, duets like Jixie King and Tony Curtis's Any Man You Want, which combine the hoarse coarse vocal grain of ragger with excuse me, with swing beats sickly slick slickness. The contrast of rough lust and oily, unctuous pleading is interest, and Dancehall and New Jack have obvious links production-wise, but I prefer the pure ragger of Spraga Benz here, the Einsturzende meets Marshall drums battery of Dem Flap, this squelchiferious twing of Giwi Danani. Squelchiferious. This guy's great. Okay. Raga has generated few artists capable of holding your interest for the length of an album. This is a real issue, I feel, in electronic dance music. How many full-length LPs take you from the start to the finish without you getting bored? Um, I don't know if there's something about dance music as a whole that's much more uh, comfortable with shorter releases, EPs, singles... Um, but I don't feel many dance music albums take you on a journey from start to finish. LFO uh, and Underworld, LFO particularly, maybe are an exception of this. But um, uh, please contribute. If you feel that I'm missing something, that there must be some, some other ones. Um, what's he called? Well, I'm forgetting his name. We'll have to come back to this one. So Raga has generated few artists capable of holding your interest for the length of an album. On Terra Fabulous's Yaga Yaga, which is on East West, Maestro, Dave Kelly's production and beats are subtly inventive but softcore, and the songs are sweetened with treacly harmonies. Fab's persona is sort of Raga without aggro. Boastful, bawdy, but never brutal. A Raga LL Cool J instead of Schooly D. There's a great interview Simon Reynolds has with LL Cool J in um, and the book I uh, held up earlier. Um, and maybe we could uh, do that another time. Um, where did I get to? Where's the terror? Um, still, where's the terror? Still, the album does, does get raw to the end with Mr. Big Man and Broke Wine Butterfly. It's a great name for a tr track, which reprised the epileptic anti-grooves of Buju bands and classics like Big It Up and Bogle Dance. Much more unsound and exciting are Bounty Killer vs. Beanie Man's Guns Out and Ninja Man's Hollow Point Bad Boy, both green sleeves. The ultra-minimal sound, both are produced by King Jammy, are as desiccated. That's a great word, desiccated. The dryness of Raga. Um, skeletal and two-dimensional as Electro. Really curious compa comparisons with... Uh, I think Tech Step he mentions earlier, and Electra as well, the dryness, the crispness, the desiccated uh, approach, the, the old tonality. Um, 
Beanies off the air, bad boy, and ninjas write your will. Each revive the famous Casio synth B line of Under Me Slang Tang. Song mentioned earlier. It's in the description. You absolutely must go and listen to it right now. The first electro reggae hit. While ninjas warp them, Bubba is full of wiki wiki voices. As for the lyrics, they're relentlessly sociopathic albeit leavened with a macabre wit, deadly medley. Ninja's hollow point takes its title from bullets designed to flatten on impact, mushroom through the body and inflict maximal internal, uh, maximum internal damage. Nice one, Ninja. Really curious element here is the discomfort with the lyrical content. Um, there really isn't any question in my mind that you could, should and must enjoy any form um, of any uh, of any music, regardless of its political content. It really upsets me when people refuse to listen to the Smiths because of mean old Morrissey, or the Fall because of mean old Marky Smith, or Wagner because of mean old Richard Wagner. Well, that's your funeral. That's your loss if you can't deal with the discomfort of not living in a sterilized political world that you have created thanks to your Facebook bubble, then you're going to suffer because of it. You're going not to taste the fruitful waters, uh, the splendor of all forms of music because your politics stops you from doing it. Having said that, um, it is still something that makes you uncomfortable. For example, um, the man who did the wonderful Zungu Zung Zungu Zungu Zeng, who's na- Yellow Man, that's his name. Yellow Man is more of a dancehall uh, artist, like one of the toasters. Um, and he's just really homophobic. <laughs> it doesn't spoil, re- it, it, maybe it does spoil it. It sort of adds something rotten to the mix. It maybe it gives you slight sort of sense of worry about where the where it comes from but yellow man let me uh maybe put yellow man in the descriptions but his track uh zungu zung zungu zungu zeng is so so delightful that why wouldn't you love this uh he's a fascinating man anyway given his background and his um disabilities uh but he is frankly a very unpleasant person but so was john lennon the wife beater so I'll, I'll add that um, track to the description or in the comments later. Uh, but for now, where have we got to? It's cartoon gangster stuff, perhaps to be taken with a pinch of salt. So that's that's the other thing you never really know with these, you know, these expressions whether they're actually taking all of this aesthetic seriously. And even if they did, does it matter, really, in a strict sense? Because is it going to make you go out and shoot people? Almost certainly not. And if it does, it's still not responsible. Uh, If it was going to incite violence, then it would be banned, pretty much. I mean, I'm just trying to get this Yellow Man track. Um, I'm really curious about the case of John Venables and Richard Thompson, the murderers. Um, of uh, um, Jamie or James Bolger uh, in 1993 and the media quoted um, uh, or the media were often um, blaming television and film particularly Child's Play which is Child's Play 4 or whatever one it was the kids almost certainly never watched it and even if they did that's got that doesn't say anything really about whether they these kids premeditated the murder, uh, whether this component of having exter- an external influences has anything to do with free will, whether you will go out and murder someone uh, anyway, or whether a film has inspired you to do it. Beanie's Mobster is just one of the myriad ragged tunes sampled by that strain of jungle I call Gangster Rave. Sampling is said to be a huge part of Raga as well, which probably sets it aside from Dancehall. 
gangster rave. It's kind of an interesting uh, compound that Reynolds comes up with. So finally, a word for Jungle Hits Volume 1, which is on Street Tough, which scoops up the most most of the ragged jungle cuts that count from General Levy's roisterous, incredible to Shy FX's blood-curdling original nutter. Absolutely listen to this again. It's in the uh, description. Unbeatable. Uh, Shy FX is Gangster Kid as well. This compilation's in the top three album chart as I write, which is in October 1994. No doubt about it, this is 90s pop, the sound of young black Britain, which, of course, anticipates jungle. So at the end of all of these articles in this book, Reynolds uh, does a little postscript written more recently. Uh, There we go. Um, Sort of reflecting on where he was at the time, whether he still agrees with what he said. And he writes, to finish off today's reading... Or well, this morning's reading, Hardcore Underground Equals the Avant Edge. Hardcore Underground Equals the Avant Edge. That was my line at this point. But I do wonder if the best stuff isn't in fact the crossover dance hall. I haven't listened to Bounty and Beanie's Guns Out since reviewing it, but Beanie Man's Who Am I? Yet again, listed in the description. Have a listen. So good. Beanie Man's Who Am I, a top 10 smash, and probably my favourite dancehall tune ever, can hardly be accused of a lack of sonic strangeness. Its Jeremy Harding playground rhythm is one of the most stunningly futuristic and uncanny ragga productions of the 90s. It's quite haunting, this song, uh, Beanie Man's Who Am I. Now this is really fascinating last sentence, and it's brought me back to the intricate and detailed world, the oeuvre of Shaggy. Shaggy, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Mr. Bombastic. I listened to it this morning. It's brilliant. The samples, the, the vocals, it's so weird. Even Bombastic by Shaggy, unjustly slighted here in the article, is pretty extreme if you think about it. Those insanely deep basso profundissimo vocals. So it's with the spirit of shaggy, bombastic, and electronic or tech kind of reggae that I leave you. We're going to be dealing with the devil at 4 p.m. of the major arcana number 15. I shall see you then. Take care of yourselves and 